Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Good morning class Today we will continue the previous lesson last week Wa alaikum salam May I ask a question, ma'am? Sure, Tia What is your question? Why are we speaking on front of an audience according to experts? Melody Templeton in her book entitled Public Speaking and Presentations Demystified 2010 explained why we are speaking. Most commonly, a speaker is selected because he or she fits into at least one of the following categories. Would you tell us the categories, ma'am? The categories are A. A subject matter expert or SME that is someone who knows the subject in depth. Television news shows will often interview a doctor about a health-related issue, an attorney about a legal case, or a retired general about a military initiative. Hence, just because someone is an SME, don't assume that person is the most skilled communicator. B. The most senior person on the team or within the organization. The person with seniority is often selected to speak because that person has the influence, credibility, or perspective to offer the big picture. The senior person will often give an overview and will be the first of several speakers. C. A person with political connections to the audience. The connected person serves as the connecting bridge between the audience and the other speakers. D. A high potential employee who is being groomed for another position or opportunity. The public exposure of a high-stakes presentation is invaluable for career development. E. Someone who volunteered to speak. This person may be an excellent speaker, the one most comfortable with the audience or the topic, the one most willing to support a reluctant team, or just egotistical. As an audience member, you might not know until you hear what the speaker has to offer. F. Someone who could not get out of doing it. Anything is possible with this person. Give her a break. A reluctant speaker may surprise everyone. This is the way I got started as a professional speaker. G. A great speaker. This category may or may not be combined with any of the others. Ma'am, according to other experts, why are we speaking? 1. Effective communication Experts like Dale Carnegie emphasize the importance of effective communication and public speaking. Presenting ideas clearly and persuasively is a valuable skill in various aspects of life. 2. Influence and persuasion Social psychologists, including Robert Claydini, have studied the principles of influence. Public speaking allows individuals to use persuasive techniques to influence and persuade their audience. 3. Education and information sharing Scholars like Ken Robinson highlight the role of education and public speaking. Sharing knowledge, insights, and information with an audience contributes to learning and intellectual growth. 4. Inspiration and Motivation Motivational speakers, such as Tony Robbins, use public speaking to inspire and motivate their audience. Sharing personal stories and insights can have a profound impact on individuals' mindsets and behavior. 5. Leadership Communication Experts in leadership like John C. Maxwell stress the importance of effective communication for leaders. Public speaking is a crucial skill for leaders to articulate their vision, goals, and values to inspire and guide their teams. 6. Cultural and Social Impact Communication theorists such as Marshall McLuhan discuss the impact of communication on culture. Public speaking provides a platform for individuals to shape cultural narratives, challenge societal norms, and foster social 7. Entertainment and Engagement Public speakers often incorporate elements of entertainment into their presentations. 
experts in the entertainment such as storytelling experts or performance artists understand how to engage an audience through compelling narratives and captivating delivery. 8. Networking and Relationship Building Communication experts highlight the role of networking in professional development. Public speaking engagements offer opportunities to connect with a diverse audience, expanding one's network and fostering relationships. 9. Building Credibility Thought leaders and experts in various fields recognize the role of public speaking in building credibility. Sharing expertise and insights in a public forum can establish individuals as authorities in their respective domains. 10. Overcoming fear and building confidence. Psychologists, including Albert Bandura, discuss the importance of facing fears to build self-efficacy. Public speaking provides a platform for individuals to overcome the fear of speaking in front of others, leading to increased confidence. Thank you for your explanation, ma'am. It is clear. It is my pleasure, Danar. Let us continue to mental preparation, according to Templeton 2010. What do speakers have to prepare mentally before speaking in front of an audience, ma'am? 1. F-E-A-R Is not fear the main cause of our discomfort? Think about this. Our mind creates the worst-case story in the absence of facts, false evidence appearing real. How to demystify the fear factor? Simple. Find the facts that are present in the moment and shift your attention to what you know is true. As you do, notice how your heart slows, your breathing relaxes, and you have a sense that all is well. A. Know the people who make up your audience, who they are, what they do, what they came to learn, and how many will attend. And B. Arrive at least two hours early to test equipment, conduct a dry run, and most importantly, interact with people as they arrive. C. Visit the room prior to your engagement. Practice in the room if possible. D. Have a friend videotape your presentation. It's very scary but very effective in giving you the facts about what the audience will experience, rather than what you imagine the audience will experience. It is always so much better than we feel it, it is. Watch the video three times. Once with no sound, once with your eyes closed, and once with full sights and sound. F. Visualize yourself actually giving the presentation. Complete with hearing the words, seeing the audience, and noticing how great you are feeling. G. Get clear about why you are giving the talk and what you want the audience to know or achieve as a result of your presentation. H. Write down the facts about why you are the presenter. Remind yourself frequently that you are the expert today. I. Finally, leave nothing unknown. The unknown becomes the petri dish on which our tears, our fears can grow. 2. Perfect practice makes perfect presentations. A. Practice, practice, practice and then practice again. Being completely comfortable with the material eliminates the possibility of surprises. B. Prepare a practice schedule and stick to it. Be reasonable, but plan plenty of time for practice. C. Practice in front of a mirror, in front of your cat, and in front of friends. As your comfort with what you are going to say rises, so will your confidence. D. Relax. Practice deep abdominal breathing before you practice your presentation, as part of your practice and immediately before the presentation. E. Relax. Practice isometric muscle tensing, starting at your head and ending with your toes. Contract and squeeze the muscles and then release. F. Take the day before the presentation off. 
That's correct. Now practice the day prior to the presentation. Sleep well and eat a light meal several hours before the presentation. 3. Make it memorable. A. Think about a presenter who captured your attention. What was it about this person that engaged you? Think of what you are passionate about and utilize it in your presentation content, in your delivery style, or in your personal stories and facts. B. Remember. People may not remember what you say, but they will remember how you make them feel. Decide how you want your audience to feel about your message and how you will need to act to make the audience understand your message. C. Use quotations, facts, and stories that support the contents or pertinent details you want the audience to absorb. D. If possible, find a way to check back with audience members after the presentation to see if they took the action you wanted them to take as a result of your material, to learn how you can improve your presentation, and to gather more information on how your performance was received. E. Have fun, and your audience will have fun too. Tia, do you know what an out and centered speaker is? Some speeches are ineffective because the speaker is self-centered, focusing on how do I look and am I doing a good job and does everyone like me? The self-centered speaker fails to focus on the audience members and their needs. A better approach is taken by the audience-centered speaker, one who tries to connect with listeners and offer them a meaningful experience. If we are audience-centered speakers, we learn everything we can about our listeners in advance, and then we tailor our speech to their needs and interests. We look directly at the audience, speak with enthusiasm, and try to reach every listener. That is correct, Tia. Wonderful answer. Thank you, ma'am. Taking about an audience-centered speaker. I am still confused how a speaker can gather information about the audience, ma'am. We can get information about the audience from one interviews. Start by interviewing the person who invited you to speak. Find out all that you can about the listener's knowledge level, attitudes, needs, interests, and backgrounds. Get details about the occasion such as the purpose of the event, other speakers on the program, the size of the audience, and most importantly, your time limit. Next, ask for the names and contact information of a few prospective listeners and interview them to find out what they already know about your subject, what ideas and information they are hoping to receive from your speech, and whether any particular approach, such as visual aids, works well with this group. When you start your speech, you can thank the people you interviewed by name. Doing so will add to your credibility because it shows your desire to meet the needs and interests of your listeners. 2. Surveys Another good way to get information about your audience is to conduct a survey in advance of your speech. Using a questionnaire to poll listeners' knowledge, interests, and attitudes for a classroom speech, work with your instructor to decide how and when to distribute the questionnaire. For a career or community speech, try to get permission to contact your future listeners through an electronic channel that is common among them, such as an email distribution list, a Facebook page, or a LinkedIn group. A questionnaire can have two kinds of questions, open-ended questions which encourage respondents to elaborate on their views and closed questions, which give respondents pre-selected options such as yes, no, true, false, and multiple choice. It means that speakers have to do audience analysis, ma'am. Yes, Danar, absolutely. According to Templeton 2010, you can almost always find information about an audience, even a virtual one. Here are a few categories you will want to learn about. 
A. Demographics Demographics are statistical characteristics, usually considered hard data. Common demographic data include age, gender, race, income, education, and so on. When preparing for your presentation, it is important to learn as much as you can about these demographics. Demographics include one generation, whether your audience is made up of boomers generation X, Y, or Z, or some other group, knowing the age range of your listeners is important. Our shared life experiences help us determine what's normal, motivating, and desirable. Our heroes and villains vary considerably based on our age. Each generation has been conditioned to communicate in ways that work for it. The younger the people in your audience, the more likely they are to communicate by text, instant message, and blog, and the less likely they are to be interested in a long presentation from a talking head. Great communicators know how to make a common connection that speaks to everyone. You will need to choose stories, references, examples, and terminology that will have meaning for your audience. 2. Gender Is your audience predominantly one gender or evenly mixed. Choose example and language appropriate for everyone. If you are using an example character, do not call every manager him or every programmer her. Choose terms that refer to one gender when you know the facts. 3. Culture We live in a global society, and cultural sensitivity is absolutely necessary for speakers. You can prevent a serious misinterpretation of your message by developing awareness of differences in culture without assigning a value, good or bad. Learn as much as you can about the specific culture of your audience. 4. Occupation or Expertise The occupations and work experiences of audience members give you clues to the language terminology and examples that matter to them audiences comprising insurance underwriters project managers or firefighters understand the concept of risk dentists architects and web designers will relate to the balance of art and science each occupation has its own language and slang also known as jargon you will also want to know about the security or volatility of the audience's industry. Talking about career paths and alienate audience members who feel vulnerable to job loss. 5. Geographic Location Match your message to your locale. Think of any concert or live performance you have attended. Most presenters acknowledge their location to the audience. Most people like to hear their town's name and they appreciate hearing that the person on stage knows something special about the location. It is important to get the pronunciation right and to learn some local facts. 6. Special Needs The Americans with Disabilities Act requires that everyone have access to most public and private facilities. They must also have access to information. Even if you are not in the United States, you will still want to accommodate everyone who would like to hear your talk. That means you need to consider providing such resources as large print signage and handouts, sign language translators, special seating or space for assisting animals, check with the meeting planner, program coordinator or manager to get information on special needs. B. Psychographics Attitudes, Values, and Interest Psychographic information is often considered to be softer data. Political opinions, attitudes, values, and lifestyles are common psychographic data. When preparing for your presentation, it is important to learn as much as you can about psychographic information. Psychographics includes one knowledge. As you prepare your material, determine what information the audience members share in common. It is a good idea to start talking at a level they all understand and quickly bring the less knowledgeable members of the group up to speed. It may be necessary to define any acronyms you use.
two interests, expectations, and motivations. Each person in your audience is attending for his or her own reasons. Those who want to be there are already motivated to listen, and those who would rather be anywhere else need to be encouraged to tune in to you. Listeners in the latter group need to know the WIIFN factor. What is it, it for me? Engage them as soon as possible. Let them know that you have something to offer them right up front. Similarly, hostile audiences should feel that you understand their position, even though it might differ from your own. What audience members expect from you will influence how they react to whatever you say. Try to match their expectations with your style. Or, boldly use a style change to help make your point. Ask yourself these questions. Do the people in your audience expect you to be formal or funny? Are they reading a sales pitch? Is the meeting typically conversational? Were previous speakers dynamic or boring? 3. Language If your audience is multilingual, learn as much as you can about the languages represented in the group. If possible, enlist a trusted confidant who understands the language. Ask your colleague to go over your material for any words or concepts that will not translate well. 4. Influence Make every effort to know the key players in your audience. Those who hold the highest titles may not be the most influential decision makers. When you know the hierarchy of influence in your audience, you may not be able to gear your persuasive skills toward the key stakeholders. Referring to some key people in the organization can influence the receptivity of your audience. 5. Relationship Audience members who like and know each other well will usually be more interactive than a group whose members haven't met. A group that meets regularly for social reasons usually wants a speaker to deliver an entertaining short message. Highly social groups have been known to start mingling before the presentation has finished. 6. If you find yourself in this situation, you will need to adjust your style to be more casual and keep it concise. If the speaker is well known to the audience, a personal approach might be very effective. If people in the audience know each other but do not know the speaker, a more formal approach is best. A formal, direct style usually works best when you are delivering bad news to any group even if the listeners know each other well. In delivering important news, both bad and good, it is essential to send the same message to all stakeholders. If possible, tell everyone the same message at the same time and in the same manner, so you can avoid rumors and misinformation. 7. Concerns do some research to find out what's on the minds of your audience, what are they particularly interested in right now, and what is their point of view. Always tell an audience what it needs to know. When possible, that message should be wrapped in a coating of what it wants to know. 8. Why are they gathered? You need to know why the group is meeting, so you can create an appropriate format for your talk. Are you giving your talk to a group of scientists at a scientific symposium? Be formal. Are you assembled for a quick stand-up meeting before work? Be quick and to the point. Is the presentation at the client's office or at a conference center? Be well prepared and willing to adjust your style to the client's needs. 9. The Group History if your meeting is a regularly scheduled event and the group follows a normal routine or agenda, expect to follow the group's style. If this is an emergency session or if you are delivering particularly bad news, be direct and dispel any fears as soon as possible. The situation will affect your content and style. 10. Special Situations 
Is this group facing any unusual circumstances? Special situations could be almost anything that could affect the group's atmosphere. Here are some examples. A declining membership, executive turnover, a new competitor, eroding customer base, exceptional accomplishments, layoffs, budget cuts, disaster recovery. How about audience analysis according Gregory, 2018, mem Besides some aspects explained before, Gregory 2018 stated that to be a successful communicator, you should welcome the opportunity to meet the needs of all listeners, not just those who are like you. Besides considering the listener's gender, age, educational background, occupation, cultures, knowledge, psychology, interest level or attitude, expectations, the occasions, and listeners with disabilities, speakers need to consider the following. Religious affiliation. Knowing the religious affiliations of your audience will give you good clues about their beliefs and attitudes. Most Seventh-day Adventists, for example, are very knowledgeable about nutrition because of the strong emphasis the denomination places on health and diet. If you are asked to speak to an Adventist group on a health-related issue, you can assume that the audience has a higher level of background knowledge on the subject than the average audience. You can therefore avoid going over basic information they already know. Economic and Social Status Be sensitive to the economic and social status of your listeners so that you can adapt your speech accordingly. Suppose you are going to speak in favor of an economic stimulus package intended to create new manufacturing jobs. If your listeners are blue-collar workers or unemployed, they will probably be favorably disposed to your ideas before you even begin. You therefore might want to aim your speech at encouraging them to support political candidates who endorse the stimulus program. However, if your listeners are wealthy members of the business community, many of them may be opposed to your ideas because they fear higher taxes or they cannot easily relate to the people whom the stimulus would most benefit. International listeners, the world today is a global village with interlocking interests and economies and you must know how to interact with the customers and associates from many different countries. Whether you are speaking on campus, in the community or in your career, any audience you face is likely to include people for whom English is a second language. So speakers should do the following things. A. Respect taboos. Every culture has its own set of taboos, and violating them can undermine a speaker's credibility. Stacy Krager of Venice Beach, California, who works around the world as a television producer, says, I have a habit of putting my hands on my hips when I talk. In Indonesia, she was told that when you stand that way, it is seen as a sign of rudeness or defiance. B. Learn nonverbal signals. Body language cues such as eye contact vary from country to country. American business executives assume a person who will not look them in the eye is evasive and is honest. But in many parts of Latin America, Asia, and Africa, keeping your eyes lowered is a sign of respect. C. Conduct research. Get insights by browsing websites specializing in international cultures. Books and articles also can be good sources, but make sure they are recent because cultural information can become outdated. Contact knowledgeable people. You can use social media sites like Facebook or Instagram to consult people who live in or visit the country you have questions about. Or you can find an expert on your campus or in your community whom you can interview face to face. C. Be careful with jargon and slang. Avoid using idiomatic expressions. If you must use jargon, such as interface or virtual reality, explain or illustrate each term. D. Maintain a serious formal tone. Americans are accustomed to speakers using a humorous and informal approach to public speaking. 
but American presenters who adopt this tone with international audiences are often viewed as frivolous and disrespectful. Telling jokes and coming across as laid back can destroy the effectiveness of a presentation. E, if possible, provide handouts covering some of your main points before. Most non-native speakers of English have greater comprehension when reading than when listening. If they read the material beforehand, they can find out the meaning of any terms they do not understand, and when they come to the actual presentation, they will have a knowledge base that will maximize their understanding of your remarks. Be sure to avoid giving out lengthy material immediately before or during a meeting. F. Provide visual and tactile learning. To make sure that your words are understood, you can use visual aids or demonstrations to illuminate your ideas. You can provide any hands-on experiences. Ma'am, I am sorry for interrupting you. Must audience size be also analyzed by speakers before speaking in front of an audience? Yes, Danar, audience size is also included. It can be unsettling to walk into a room expecting an audience of 20, but instead find 200. Knowing the size of your audience ahead of time will help you not only to prepare yourself psychologically, but also to plan your presentation. Will you need extra large visual aids? Will you need a microphone? It is easier to connect with your listener if they are close to you physically. If you have relatively few listeners and they are scattered throughout a big room or area all clumped together in the back rows, ask them to move to the front and center. Because some listeners dislike having to move, you may have to appeal for their cooperation by saying something like, I hate to bother you, but it will save my throat if I do not have to shout. Beside doing audience analysis, what else should speakers analyze before they speak in front of an audience, ma'am? That is a good question, Tia. Let me answer your question based on Lisa A. Ford Brown in her book entitled Guide to Public Speaking in 2012. Speakers also need to do situation analysis. Would you explain about it more comprehensively, ma'am? Sure, Tia. Information you should know about your speaking situation includes details about the place where you will give your speech, the time, and the occasion. The situation may determine the type of speech or focus you should give, or what your delivery style should be. Some topics will not work well in certain environments, within a given speech time limit, or for a given occasion. For example, if you are asked to give a speech demonstrating a craft to a group of Girl Scouts at a local park in an outdoor shelter, you would avoid selecting a craft that might have a lot of small details that would be different from sea or small or lightweight parts that might blow in the wind. Anything too complex might be difficult to teach with all the outdoor distractions. Use the review checklist below to help you analyze your situation. Answer the following questions to analyze your speaking situation. Why is the audience here? What is my relationship with the event? How much time will I have to speak? What are the details, location, time, other speakers, occasion, etc. of the event? What are the audience's expectations because of the occasion? How do these factors influence my topic or type of informative speech? It is clear, ma'am. I am interested in listening to your explanation about types of informative speech. Would you explain it, ma'am, please? All right, according to Kathleen M. German in her book entitled Principles of Public Speaking 2017, informative speeches take many forms depending on the situation and the level of knowledge possessed by listeners. Three of these forms, explanations and lectures, demonstrations and oral reports, occur so frequently that they merit special attention. 
They represent three common ways in which people package information. One, a speech of explanation. It does not just offer a dictionary definition, rather explanations define concepts or processes in ways that make them relevant to listeners. Lectures, which usually involve more extended explanations and definitions, also increase an audience's understanding of a particular field of knowledge or activity. For instance, a business executive might define lean manufacturing and go on to show how it can make the company work better. 2. Demonstrations Throughout your life, you have heard classroom instructions, seen job demonstrations, and read instructions for everything from making a cake to replacing your car battery. Not only have you gone through many tell sessions, but you have also had people show you how to execute actions, how to sort various kinds of plastics for recycling, how to assemble burgers at a fast food shop, or how to sharpen the teeth of a change law. Generally, demonstrations both explain processes and illustrate them. Demonstrations involve the serial presentation of information, usually in steps or phases. They require clarity because your listeners are expected to learn how to reproduce these steps themselves. 3. Oral Reports An oral report is a speech that arranges and interprets information gathered in response to a request made by a group. Academic reports, committee reports, and executive reports are examples of oral reports. Scientists and other scholars announce their research findings in oral reports at professional conventions. Committees in business, industry, and government carry out special tasks and then present oral reports to their sanctioning organizations or constituencies. You might have been asked to present a report on possible community projects for a campus organization. Thank you very much for your explanation, ma'am. It is clear for me. It is clear for me too, ma'am. What about the topics of informative speech, ma'am? According to Stephen A. Beeb and Susan J. Beeb in their book entitled Public Speaking, an Audience-Centered Approach in 2018, Types of informative speech topics are 1. Speeches about objects or things A speech about an object might be about anything tangible, anything you can see or touch. You may or may not show the actual object to your audience while you are talking about it. Almost any kind of object could form the basis of an interesting speech, something from your own collection, Baskets, comic books, antiques, baseball cards, sports cars, guitars, smartphones, digital video cameras, toys, and so on. 2. Speeches about procedures A speech about a procedure explains how something works, for example, the human circulatory system, or describes a process that produces a particular outcome, such as how grapes become wine, at the close of such a speech, your audience should be able to describe, understand, or perform the procedure you have described. Here are some examples of procedures that could be the topics of effective informative presentations. How an ebook reader works, how to refinish furniture, how to write a summary, how to plant an organic garden, how to select a graduate school, how watches work, what enables microwave ovens to cook food, or how ballots are choreographed, and so on. 3. Speeches about people A biographical speech could be about someone famous or about someone you know personally. Most of us enjoy hearing about the lives of real people, famous or not, living or dead, who have some special qualities. The key to presenting an effective biographical speech is to be selective. Do not try to cover every detail of your subject's life. Relate key elements of a person's career, personality, or other significant life events to a particular point rather than just reciting facts about an individual. 
Perhaps your grandfather was known for his generosity, for example, mention notable examples of his philanthropy. If you are talking about a well-known personality, pick information or a period that is not widely known, such as the person's childhood or private hobby and so on. Four speeches about events. Just seeing the date of a past significant event stimulates our memory or conjures indelible images that we have seen in the media countless times. A major event you have witnessed or researched can form the basis of fascinating informative speech. Your goal is to describe the event in concrete, tangible terms and to bring the experience to life for your audience. According to German 2017, Famous occurrences make good speech topic. This include recent events such as political elections, natural disasters, and armed conflicts. In addition, you might talk about historical events such as famous battles, unusual discoveries, natural disasters, or memorable celebrations. Five speeches about ideas. Speeches about ideas are usually more abstract than other types of speeches. The following principles, concepts, and theories might be topics of idea speeches. Principles of communication, freedom of speech, evolution, theories of aging, positive psychology, theories, principles, concepts, theologies, and traditions can make excellent informative speeches. You could explain the traditions of Taoism, the theory of relativity, the principles of capitalism, and so on. Alright class, we come to the end of our class. I hope you can review the materials I explained at home. See you next week. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.